Hey, what's happening guys? It's Mark back in the shrimp room, or the pleck room, or whatever it is these days. There seems to be so many species in here, I, can, uh, I can't count. But um, what we're going to concentrate today, I'm going to do you a little care video on how to look after little marbled hatchet fish. Little congiella strigiata, beautiful little fish from Peru, Guyana, Brazil, all these parts of the Amazon, South American fish. And they are absolutely stunning. Now, I picked these guys up from my local fish shop about two weeks ago now, and they're lovely condition. They're around probably, I would say, an inch. The biggest one's about an inch and a half long, and they're going to grow up to be about two inches maximum size. Okay. Now, I'm going to take you through a few little tank parameters and things of what these guys need. pH wise, these guys like to stay in around anything from 5.5 .5 to 7.5. Five, something around those sort of regions is going to be good for them okay breeding wise you're going to need them it's going to have to be lower it's going to be 5.5 .5 to 6.5 I'm going to breed these at some point they may be a little bit small but they're a very very skittish fish now I put them in with my baby plecos and um, because and I've dropped the water level down about oh I would say about a good four inches out of the tank okay because these guys are super good at jumping. In fact, they're the only true flying fish in the world. You see the flying fish in the ocean, but they literally speed out of the water and hold those big pectoral fins out that they've got, and they go into the wind and they'll glide. Okay, that's what they do. They're more of a gliding fish. But these little guys, as you can see by their massive pectoral fins, which are perched in that sort of 45 degree angle there, they, what they'll do is they'll come up to the surface, they'll see insects, small flies, stuff like that in the air and they will actually jump and flap and catch insects right out of the air. So it's very, very important, in fact imperative that you have a tightly fitting lid, okay, or you'll end up with these guys on the floor. And um, because if they see anything and they're hungry, they will leap for it, like little arowanas, they'll be straight out of the water and you're gonna lose them and that'd be a real shame. You can see they're quite an active little fish, always looking around. If you look at that one near it to the screen now, you can see that little upturned mouth, that means they're predominantly surface feeders, okay? They're not going to feed anything that literally falls below their eye line, they'll leave it. So it's imperative that you feed them on the surface. Now, good foods to feed these little chaps is brine shrimp, daphnia, because they all go to the surface at some point and they'll pick them up off the surface, okay? Brine shrimp are very good for them. You can't just feed these guys on flake food either, okay? You've got to give them a good mix of live food and flake food or small floating pellet foods and they'll get used to these things over time but it's imperative that you give them a good a good grounding and a good varied diet, okay? Or they're not going to survive. Um, longevity of life with these little guys, anything from, believe it or not, between two and five years they can live for but you've got to keep them in a small group, anything from six to eight upwards is gonna be the best thing, okay? To keep these little guys happy. They they like floating plants on the surface, but not too, too many. That surface will, that, that the surface plants, will get these after one of my little shrimps there, that guy. They're gonna, um, I've got mostly, I've taken all the baby shrimps out of here now, just to, if, in case you guys are worried. Um, most of the baby shrimp, very small ones, I've trapped out and I put them in my other tank in the workshop because they will predate on the small shrimp when they come to the surface to feed on stuff. So I've taken those guys out, so don't panic there. The coloration on these fish is absolutely beautiful. The strigiata part of the, uh, of the name means street. And the first part, the, uh, the congiella, is the lady who found them. And the strigella, the strigiata, sorry, is the... Um, is the street part okay so that's giving it that marble effect hence their name marble hatchet fish or just river hatchet fish they're called there's another name for them as well now one thing with these guys is they're really prone to disease okay especially ick white spot stuff like that okay so when you get them make sure i had these for quarantine for a week first chilled them out in a nice little aquarium so i've had them for a couple of weeks now any signs of stress with these or any little tomites or little little you know the little white spots that you see on the fish would have come out in that time in that time frame so they're 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 pretty well clear and so i put them in this tank now and they're showing just 
normality, no spots on them still for the following week. So we're all doing well, but they are prone to stress. That's one thing. And another thing I'll say with keeping these as well, guys, I used to have a huge planted tank and I had, I think it was about 30 of these guys in there. Now, when you're keeping other Charisons, um, like Neons and all the Cardinals, different types of Tetras, you're going to need to watch out that these guys don't get out-competed for food, okay? Because they will go to the surface, they'll look like they're racing around, but their little Charison, their little, cur their little cousins will out-compete them for food. They're a lot quicker than them, and they'll out-compete them for food so quickly, and these guys will end up starving, okay? So it's imperative that you feed the tank first, wait for a bit, wait until all the other little fish, all your community fish, have had a good feed, and then put some more food in, and try and target feed these little guys on the surface by dropping either little blood worms in, mosquito larvae are another great food for them because they wriggle through the water and come up to the surface to breathe, and that's where these little guys are gonna pick them off. And this I say, it's really imper imperative that you give them live food as well as the flake food. They need that insect-based diet Floating bug bites as well, they'll eat those. Um, they'll take them off the surface once they get used to eating them. Let me see if I can get you a nice close up of that guy there. He seems to be, look at that. You gonna move now? Now I've got you on camera. I've just put a load of different blood worms and things in the tank for the Plex this morning and way for food as well. I'm trying to drink my coffee and adjust my tripod at the same time here, it's not working. Where are you? There you go. Yeah, they're absolutely beautiful fish. Been one of my favorite fish now for, for many, many years as I've been in the aquarium hobby. And you get the silver ones as well. Now the silver ones are harder to breed than the marbles. The marbles tend to breed a bit more readily and they're a little bit more easier to breed. There's that little guy there. Little nick out of his tail, but that'll soon heal back. Yeah, the silvers tend to be a little bit more harder to breed. But they've all mixed together. But these are an absolutely stunning fish, they really are. If you're gonna keep these guys, you wanna keep them in a, at least a 15 to 20 gallon tank, okay? That's like a minimum size. Tightly fitting lid, like I said earlier. Plenty of live foods. Temperature range between anything from 22 right up to 27. They're quite broad range sort of fish, but to breed them obviously you want to keep that up the higher the higher end. So I'm going to breed these, like I said earlier, um, at some point. And that's going to be a very interesting thing. I bred them years ago, and uh, when I seen these in the shop, I thought I've got to have them and, and, and do another breeding video of these guys. It's very interesting. And, and the young ones, they're super cute as well when they're growing up. So uh, I thought I'd do a video of that for you. Now another good thing to um, I'll just set you back, sorry, I'll just set you back a little bit on the on my tripod. Now you can see my heap of baby plex on the left hand side of the screen there. And um, I chucked some wafers in there because they were stuck all over the glass. They were feeding on the glass and I couldn't see the um, the hatchet fish because there were so many of them in there. They're growing like little weeds they are. Really nice now, putting on some weight. We've got some long fin albinos, normal common bristle nose long fins. And we've got the albino long fins as well. And some common black, uh, some common bristle nose in there. I've done some crossbreeding videos on those. If you want to go back and have a look at those at any time, they're all in my playlists. But getting back to these little guys, you can see I've dropped that water level down because there's no lid on the top of this tank. But I've got some perspex in the workshop, which I'm going to put over the top to stop these guys jumping out. Another good thing with these as well, they like a moderate flow in a tank. So if you've got canister filters, um, things like that, or a very very small protected power head. Um, so nothing can get sucked in through it into the impeller. That's also a good thing to do as well because they like to face into the into the tide. You imagine them as little trout in a river in the Amazon and that slow flow is going through and they'll be on the surface picking flies off the surface and little bugs as they're coming past. Okay, So they stay in one place as a little group and they'll be picking off the insects as they're floating past. So they like a very, very moderate flow in there. Okay, Like I said, surface plants as well. I've got that big load of rickia on top which is growing absolutely crazy at the moment um, off the top of the shrimp hides. That's really doing nicely and chasing for that light. Um, they can hide in amongst that as well. It's a great place for them to scatter their eggs as well if they wanted to do some scattering in there. They will predate on their young as well, but that's another video we'll get into that another time. 
but that's what I thought I'd give you a little quick update there, a little how to little guide how to keep them, and um, if you fancy getting some, like I said, they're a very they're, they're a skittish little fish when you first get them. You've got to get them in a group of six to eight up. That will make them feel more comfortable because they are a group shoaling fish. And if you just get one, two, they're going to stress out in a community tank. They'll rarely find each other and they'll get white spot in no time at all. If it's in your tank and your others have, um, have built up a resistance to it, they'll pick anything up and they will stress and you'll lose them. Okay, so it's very, very important that you keep um, at least six to eight up to ten if you've got a big enough tank to house them or just have a lovely little group with a floating plants in it some other little plants on the bottom recreate a nice little Amazon basin scape you can darken the water up with a bit of uh, with a bit of peat if you like or some some leaves and um, and they'll be lovely at home in their nice little black water tank they'll be quite happy in amongst that and if you fancy keeping some I hope this little bit of information helps you out as you can see there are beautiful little fish there in fact, what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of uh, flake food in there, just crumple a little bit in, and I'll just show you them feeding on the surface. Right, I've just put some flake food in, just crushed it up on the surface, and hopefully you'll see them taking little bits off. There they go. For the last couple of weeks, I've been making sure they have a good varied diet. Look at that lot. Amazing stuff. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in to Wednesday's little, little, fishy, little fishy facts. Hope you enjoyed it. These guys are starting to frenzy out on that food now. For all you guys that are interested in what I'm feeding them, it's a bit of Tetra Prima, which I've just squeezed through my fingers and made it into a little powdery bits on the bottom and they tend to float down slowly. And as you can see, these guys are hoovering it up. Anyway guys, thanks for tuning in to Wednesday's episode. As always, you're all stars. Love you loads. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you on Sunday for something completely different. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.